What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist and I'm here with Gersh One. And today we're back to answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater yeah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below, put a question in front of your question, because we answer those questions first. And happy holidays to you, hence the change of decor. Because I burp. <laughs> uh, this question comes from Bruva Michael. Who is the who has the <laughs> who has the strongest space navy um, in 40k? Uh, good question. Uh, who who do you think? After thinking about it, it's got to be the Tyranids. No manches. Si mancho. <laughs> um, the Tyranids are a race that basically adapts to whatever they're fighting against. So they're out in space. They're basically instinctual creatures unless you have uh, synapse. So synapse is so important to them that they always have to constantly be protected. And in space, you can be assaulted by anything, really. You get hit asteroids, there's warp storms out there, you can face other navies. And because of this, these creatures have adapted to survive, not only as a, like an invasive species, but also defensively. So because of that, they have to have a great navy to allow them to get to where they need to so they can contain and uh, suck out all the biomass. <laughs> I just, I think of that thing from Battlefleet Gothic with, like, the, the ship that crunches you and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, no, but, like, the more I think about it, I think you're right. Like, uh, it's anything that was evolved um, into a place would be always ten times better than something created for that place. Because it just kind of makes more sense. Um, I mean, these things can survive in the vacuum of space while, um, you know, space hulks are floating around, just not working anymore. Um, so yeah, I agree, the high fleets. A uh, close second would have to be the Necrons, though. Uh, the Necrons and their, their ships um, are pretty badass because they defy physics. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, but definitely in terms of, um, I think, numbers, uh, the Imperium seems like a good choice, but when you actually look at quality over quantity, Necrons and Tyranids, I think, are, are pretty pretty good. Right. Um, which, I mean, you could have, like, a Geller field on a ship, but, like, that's not going to do much when you have the Tyranids, you know, attacking. Yeah. And you could make the argument that craft worlds are pretty good, but, again, there's very few craft worlds, and then the craft worlds that do exist, um, they're very fragile. Mm -hmm. but they're basically, it's, like, basically going to your grandma's house, and everything's covered in, like, um, what is that called? Uh, plastic wrap. So you can't sit on the couches, you can't touch the ornaments. Um, yeah. Like a bull in a china shop. Basically. Good question, though. Uh, next question. Uh, what do you got? This one is by the homie. Faking it, 66. Well, we already answered this one, but we'll answer it a quick time again. Was the Necron world engine part of the old lore or the new lore? In between. <laughs> What do we say? I think it was... Uh, it's more new lore, yeah. Yeah. Because um, I believe the Necron Lords and all of them, they, they still had their sentience and whatnot, so... Yeah. Um, next question comes from Marcel Goussard. This is attempt 39,999. When will you make a video on Kitten and the Pillared Stones? Um, you know, just because you asked and it got 10 likes, I'll do it this week. Uh... Pussy. Next one. And this one's by the Kangaroo Boxer. What's the worst glue accident you guys have ever had? One time I was super gluing seam. I was uh, super gluing some um, ludas, and then I had some extra glue on my finger. And then he went to go use the bathroom. Fill in the blanks. More like the glue filled something in. <laughs> what about you? Um, it's not really an accident, more than like a pet peeve. So I'm gluing something, and I'm holding the model together for like, what, a minute, so that I know for sure, for sure that the glue has dried, it's done, and I take my hand off, and instead of the glue adhering the two pieces together, the opposite side of the piece is like stuck to my hand. Then you had to go to the hospital and get it surgically removed? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Or just bite it off. <laughs> I, uh, I do the thing too where like if I cut myself, I usually just like s to stop the bleeding, I just put the two pieces together and super glue it. 
and then later on it just peels off. It works. I don't know if it's healthy for you though. It's probably not. Some glue is toxic. <laughs> the next question is probably comes... why you have the cough. Yeah, a chronic <laughs> cough. It's because I sniff glue. Um, GW glue. <laughs> next question comes from I love chair Delgado. Whatever happened to robot? Oh no! Whatever happened to the Legion of the Damned? They're still around. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have Primaris Marines, if that's what you're asking. I don't think they can. <coughs> and before they get Primaris. <coughs> um, but yeah, they're they're just chilling in the warp, fighting the Emperor's uh, battles. You know, just, just, just doing it. <laughs> doing it, doing it. James Coyne. Now, is it a penny, a nickel, a dime? I need to know. A throne. When will you 1v1 each other? Today! <laughs> Every night. I mean, yeah, today. <laughs> uh, We're playing an apocalypse game today. Yeah. 4,000 points of? Orcs versus, I'm guessing, Tao? Tao. Yeah. I'm going to wipe the floor with him. I was this close, this close <laughs> to playing Space Marines or Chaos. But I'm like, no, Tao were my original babies. And Orcs were his babies. So, baby fight! Yeah. Be fun. Uh, next question comes from Ralph seven seven seven. Did the Primarch of Smurf always fought or already fought the Tyranids or didn't didn't yet? And are is the High Fleet Cronus beneficial to for the Imperium as for current times of Great Rift? Well, let's let's the first one first. So Gilliman, I don't think he's personally fought the Tyranids, but it is the Ultramarines have fought, I think it was High Fleet Kraken a lot. Yep. So they know about the Tyranid Force. I know Kalgar knows about it because he got his butt whooped by the Swarm Lord. I think it chopped off like three out of his four limbs. So he knows about the Tyranids. Yeah. And then as I think what you're saying is, is High Fleet Cronus good for the Imperium? Uh, High Fleet Cronus is the specific High Fleet designed to fight chaos. Mm -hmm. um, is it good for, for the Warp Rift stuff? I mean, I guess. But it's good in terms of like how the orcs are good that they fight everything. Um, as long as you stay away, you'll be fine. Right. But and just just because they're like made to fight chaos doesn't mean they fight chaos all the time. Like let's say there's a space marine um, navy that's gonna like in the path of Cronus, they're gonna they're gonna fight them. Right? Yeah. They're not just gonna like avoid them and go to chaos. Yep. And then he has a third question. What bioform would the Tyranids produce if the Tyranids consumed a Primaris or a Primar? Um, like a mega super Swarm Lord, basically. You like I think the Swarm Lord, Swarm Lord, is the response to like Space Marine chapter masters and stuff like that, because they retain knowledge from every fight, and like when they die, that information goes back to the hive mind. So when they're regurgitated back up, now that Swarm Lord has the memories of how to fight that character. Which is why Calgar got beat so bad. Regurgitated. I wanted to use a visceral word. Nice. <laughs> uh, this question comes from Seabass and it's for the Sound Alchemist. Do you guys play Yu-Gi-Oh? If so, what deck do you guys play? <laughs> why is it for me? Because like I, don't, guys. I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, he doesn't play Yu-Gi-Oh. I played Yu-Gi-Oh back in the day. I haven't really touched it recently. Um, I saw the cards. I, the last time I played Yu-Gi-Oh, there was a guy who had an Exodia, and he played all the Exodia pieces, and then he destroyed my, he destroyed me, and then he went like that to my deck, and uh, I stopped playing after that. And by that, I mean he just grabbed it and like shuffled it on the floor and stuff like that. Yeah, like, and then he said, oh, sorry, and then put it back together. But, that's kind of what happened to your soul. Yeah. Exodia obliterated you, and you were like, ah, 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 and then he like put you back together. And now I play D and D with him. It's funny how life works. Yeah. How about now? No. Next question. Uh, this is by Bradley Krieger. Which is more elite, the Death Watch or the Grey Knights? Hmm. Grey Knights. Well, the Death Watch. They're like it's made of different chapters, and they send their elite to represent them. So you know these guys are like battle-hardened veterans that are made into an even better uh, cooperative unit because they don't go out in, in an army they usually fight in small groups so you know they're like the elite of elite so because of that i'm saying gray knights 
Because the Grey Knights are literally powerful psychers that have special abilities within them to fight chaos. Look at Drago. Look at, um, oh man, Castle and Crow, the, the guy that wields the black blade of Antwerp. Like, these guys are astonishing marines that, like, they can't be corrupted by chaos, plus they're super powerful psychers. So put just one of them against the Death Watch and they'll mop the floor with them. When Space, Mar when space Marines um, need reinforcements from, like, the Grey Knights, they usually send maybe one or two Grey Knight Battle Brothers because they know that's all that's needed. So they're both super powerful elite units, but Grey Knights, I think, in my opinion, are much better at what they do. Agreed. Grey Knights have never been corrupted. James Coyney. Coney. Coney? Coney? Oh, no. Would did that already, there. No, but he says, would you guys do a show on the Lords of Silence? Oh. Yeah, would you? That's an interesting topic. Well, see? Yeah, why not? Next one. Defuo06. Who would win? The Silent King or Trazian the Infinite? The Silent King. Yeah. He has like, the backing. Yeah, he's the OG of the, of the uh, Necrons. Yep. Think of him as like the Emperor. Like, that's the parallel. <laughs> the Silent King, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, next question comes from uh, Chris Didios. Do you think GW will release a new Chaos God slash race? If so, what would it be based on? Maybe, yes. Um, I really do believe that it's going to, because Age of Sigmar is, like, their models are the same, can't be used the same for, um... 40k? Yeah. What we're going to start seeing is a lot more, like, um, alien or, like, because are they still considered alien in fantasy? No, what are they considered? Just, like, beasts? Yeah, I guess so. So, like, a race of, like, beasts that worship, um... Uh, I think corn, because because right now what you have is you have the um, Xenogorts, right? Those guys worship uh, Zinch. Oh, Zangors. Zangors. There you go. Zenogorts. <laughs> Zenogorts. <laughs> and then you have um, for Slanesh, you have these new models that came out, like the weird like. They're like dark elves, aren't they? Yeah. The Marathis, whatever they're called. And then with Nurgle, you have like Nurglings and all that kind of stuff. But I think what's going to happen with Corn is we're going to start seeing more of like the, uh, what are they called? Um, they're like uh, half human, half uh, horse. Centaurs? Centaurs. Uh, but uh, Fantasy used to have a specific race for, for them. I forget what they were called. Beastmen, maybe? No, I don't know. Hmm. But yeah, that's what I think is going to end up happening. Um, it's it's going to be a race that can be played both fantasy and 40k um, with a, a little bit of conversion. So, yeah. I can see that working out. But we'll see. Now as far as another Chaos God, I doubt it. Uh, next question. Ryan Tomlinson. It's mentioned in the Plague Wars that a demon killed in the Material Realm using the Emperor's Sword is destroyed forever. And it's proven that when Gilliman kills a greater demon, forever. So, is it possible using this blade to kill a demon Primarch would cause that Primarch to die forever? I don't think so because I don't think um, they work the same way as demons. All right, demon Primarchs were still material beings. Like they were born or created in the material realm. Whereas demons, greater demons, they're the manifestation of their chaos patron god's power made manifest. Um, so it would make sense that the Emperor's Blade can just smite that energy and just make it disappear instead of sending it back to the warp. Um, just because he's that strong. However, if you go into our 40 facts on Drachnian, the Black Blade of Abaddon, the demon within that blade was so powerful that the Emperor's sword couldn't kill it. So that goes to show you that it could probably kill greater demons and such. Well, it has killed greater demons, but to kill a Chaos God, I don't think he can do it. Right. Just because it's so much more powerful. It'll probably hurt him, but it won't be able to kill a Chaos God. But to do that, the Emperor would have to go into the warp, go into the 
the chaos, um, I guess, whether it's the gardens of Nurgle, the tower of Zeech, whatever, go into their domain and, and fight the, 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 the chaos god there, which that's, that's a feat in and of itself. Right. Next question, last question, comes from Ryan Wilfong. Do you think the space sharks or the Carcharodons could ever become their own playable faction, similar to how the space wolves are? Um, probably not to the extent of a space wolves or a blood angels or like dark angel uh, chapter, but I do think that in the future, GW is gonna put out some type of like codex for all these like um, smaller uh, like chapters. Black Templars, mm -hmm. Mantis Warriors. Yeah, all that kind of stuff, especially with the Carcharodons, because I think even in the Warhammer community page, they showcased an entire army of, of Carcharodons. And um, they looked awesome. Yeah. They really do. Um, I forget who who the painter was, but I follow him on Instagram, <laughs> or we follow him on Instagram. Um, and they have like the cool like tattoo designs and all that kind of stuff, and then the fins. Yeah, it's really badass. That's a really fun army to like just get creative with and go go to town on. The color scheme's pretty cool, and they're brutal, just like the space wolves. So they're popular. Yeah. I think they're popular enough to have their own like rule set or supplement or something yeah until then just play the rules of a savage uh, space marine chapter like the space wolves for them mm -hmm. um, you can even have like a lone wolf be like a lone shark that'd be better yeah also you have a uh, tiberos of the red wake which is a forge world exclusive model with forge world rules that you can play in your games to make it more uh, thematic but those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, comment down below. Don't forget, we have giveaways going on right now. So check out all those uh, 40 Facts videos on Space Marines, Tau, and Orcs. Um, we're giving these things away. Once again, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and as always, I'm the Sound Alchemist. Gersh one. And we are out. <laughs>